Thank you for being here and watching the Freedom Writer documentary. I feel very blessed to be here in front of you and with my fellow Freedom Writer friends, family. What's very significant about being a teacher was that I didn't know I was going to be a teacher. I, when I graduated with my bachelor's, I didn't have a job waiting for me. I applied for different jobs and I just came into the instructional assistant at a high school. However, it was a different type of instructional assistant. It was for in a special education class. I have many different stereotypes about special ed need, need students that I was actually scared and didn't know what to expect to walk in in the class and help out these students who I, to be honest, I have these stereotypes. But when I walked into that class, my stereotypes disappeared. They disappeared because I saw faces Faces that reminded me of my fellow Freedom Rider friends, family, Tiffany, Lisa, Tr Trayvon, and what I saw was something different too. I noticed that the teacher was not teaching how Aaron taught me. And because of that, I felt I need to do something. I need to make this change. I don't want students with special needs to be left out. I want them to, to do the activities that Aaron did with us, the lion game, the fishbowl. So I decided to go back to get my credential in special education and to do something about my community, to give back. Thank you. And the amazing thing is, Daisy actually teaches at a school that a lot of the Freedom Riders went to I believe that Tiffany and Sue Ellen and Lisa all went to that same school that she is now teaching at. I love when Freedom Riders refer to one another, they use the word family. And as we have progressed, we, we really are a family. I often say that we put fun in dysfunctional, <laughs> but we are very much a, a functional, dysfunctional family. And as we have continued to tell our story, we needed a place to go and to be so rather than having a, a stuffy office or um, residing in corporate America, we rented this beautiful home in their city, this iconic space that people could go and, and make food in that kitchen or, or do their laundry if need be or show up at 4 o'clock in the morning to take a flight across the globe. So I would love Shanita to tell you about that very sacred space and why we are very much a family and how we all gravitate to that very sacred space now that we no longer have room 203. <laughs> well, the significance of the Freedom Riders Foundation being an actual home is simple. It's our home. Think about it like this. The definition of home is a place where one lives permanently. That's whether you're a family member or whatnot, right? It still makes it a home. If you're tired, where do you want to go? Home. If you're sick, where do you want to go? Home. If you want to get away from everybody else, you go home. <laughs> if you want to pig out on some good food, where do you go? Home. They don't call it a home cook meal for nothing. It's the reason behind it. Everybody's home is different. But once again, it's a family. So that home is where you make it because remember, it's a place. So that place is where you're happy. That place is where someone loves you unconditionally. That place is where somebody is gonna be willing to give you a hug without you having to ask for it because they know you, they understand you. And no matter how far you venture out, no matter where you go, no matter how many hills you go up and down in, you always remember that one place, home. And that's the reason why our foundation office is a home. I can listen to her all day. I feel like I'm in church. I went like two fingers and like fell out of hallelujah. Oh my goodness. 
But speaking of home, we had a, a gathering on Saturday to go over what we should pack and what we should wear, and she needed brought her, her children on Saturday. And there's the most amazing, I have a, a dog who was captured on Caesar Milan, because he's very naughty. And he came to our office and, and did a show with all the Freedomers in town. My dog is about 130 pounds. And her little baby rode him like he was a pony. <laughs> and Bo loved it. And it was home. He stole some pizza, he stole some muffins, but he had that little baby on him and he rode that, that little baby around the, the, the backyard. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy where we are. But what I love about this next generation of Freedomers is they have kids. And those kids go to school and there's this legacy. There's a book in a library. There's a teacher who may or may not know their story from a, a feature film. So I'd love Lisa to talk about what it's like for her to bring her boys. Her boys uh, are a little bit bigger than that baby. They can't ride a bow <laughs> around the backyard. But they are these gentle giants. They are these gentle giants. And I have to share a story with Lisa. Um, a few years ago, I went out and bought her son a book. A middle school boy. It's not sexy. It wasn't you know, something I would traditionally give a kid, but I just knew that her son would love that book. And he carried it around with him like it was a Cartier watch. <laughs> a book. Again and again and again. So I want her to come and talk about those boys and how proud we are of that space that they get to come to, come to and be who they are. <laughs> 